It really is a privilege uh, and a very special one to be able to address uh, the ASEAN India Youth Summit uh, sitting here in Singapore. Uh, that we are able to do it in these difficult times uh, is both a testimony to the importance that we attach to ASEAN India relations and to the objective of bringing our youth together, but also a tribute to the perseverance and tenacity of India Foundation that has persisted with its ASEAN India Youth Summits despite this complete lockdown all around. Now, I have spent the last 10 years either living in India or in Southeast Asia, especially here in Singapore. There are many things that connect us. But what strikes me as the most defining feature of India and Southeast Asia is the level of optimism and confidence in India and in this region. And this stems in large measure from the demography of the 640 million people of Southeast Asia and the 1.3 billion people of India. We are blessed with the power of youth, bred in diversity, brimming with talent and innovation, enterprise and energy, and buoyed by the surging tide of aspirations in our region. As I have uh, gone around Southeast Asia, and as I've seen in India, there are just remarkable examples of youth power and innovation that is transforming lives across our countries. Today, we are meeting at a time of a great pandemic, as some have described it as the most dangerous crisis in a century. It has tested all, all our nations. Each nation has done what it can and what it must to slow the spread, save the sick, and secure livelihoods. We also see the incipient signs of international cooperation. But even at its modest level, we see the power of people and societies and nations working together. Our greatest strength has been the human solidarity that has acted as a shield against this invisible foe. We have been lifted by millions and millions of examples of compassion, commitment, courage, and community service, including those of medical professionals and healthcare workers and service providers. But what has been striking is the youth that has been at the front line of helping those who need it the most. They have seen disruptions in their lives too, in education, in sports, and in social contacts. But in observing the discipline that is needed in this to combat this pandemic, each of them has become a frontline worker. And more than anywhere else in the world, we see solidarity, social responsibility, self-restraint, and service in, among the youth in Southeast Asia and India. And we see astonishing examples of innovation that is driving solutions to this pandemic and to restoring a degree of normalcy in our disrupted lives. This pandemic has driven home in sharp reality our interconnected lives. But we also know that the path forward out of this crisis to heal our societies, to restore our economies, and to repair the lives of people will also require us to recognize our interdependence. But what we see today, whenever the world has come together, whenever countries have come together after pandemics, after wars, after conflicts, when they have been driven by the belief that each of us is better off when we work for the larger good of humanity, we have created a better and a more resilient world. We see that in ASEAN too. In the 60s, ASEAN was a crucible of brutal conflicts. Today, 
These are 10 countries working together to reshape the destinies of their people. We saw that after World War II, when we built the institutions that have stood us well in these times. But the path ahead after pandemic is not yet clear. The world, the global order was already in a state of flux. The economic orthodoxies of the past few decades was under challenge. We've seen trade tensions grow, technological decoupling becoming a possibility, sentiments rising against globalization, protectionism on the rise, reaction to migrations taking place. But the pandemic could make it worse. We might enter a world that might not be as kind, it might be harsher, it might be riven with more conflicts and contests and rivalry. The future, see a crisis sometimes telescopes the future into the present. And we are beginning to see that. But we also see its silver linings. We see, for example, the drive to digitalization and innovation. We see renewed emphasis on healthcare, on education, on making a more compassionate, just and equal society, on climate change. So the path before us has a fork now and we have to make our choices. And we must take the high road of working together as people and as nations. And we all, we can never, never overestimate the power of youth to change the course of life, of history. And this generation of youth, this generation of youth has faced its fair degree of challenges from terrorism to global financial crisis and now to the pandemic. But they have shown their resilience. And this is a generation that is far more conscious, far more concerned about the challenges of our time far more connected and far more committed to resolving them. This is what gives us optimism and confidence about the future. It is the youth. And India and ASEAN have the largest pool of youth power in the world. And we must work together more and shoulder greater responsibilities as the youth of India and ASEAN region. Because there is much that connects us our heritage, for example. For more than two millennia, the tides of ocean, the winds of monsoon, and the force of human aspiration have forged a timeless link between India and Southeast Asia. We can see it play itself out in daily lives of our people. We have both been enriched by it. We see it, for example, in our worldview. India and ASEAN nations strongly believe in fostering a world built on cooperation, which is safe, secure, and stable, free from great power rivalries and competition, connected by secure seas, integrated by trade, and underpinned by a rule of law and anchored in ASEAN centrality and unity. This is the vision which Prime Minister Narendra Modi had articulated in Singapore when he delivered the keynote address at Shangri-La Dialogue in 2018. And that is what continues to guide us and will continue uh, to guide us. Our futures are interlinked. That is the lesson of history and that is the call of the future. We are neighbors, maritime and by land. We are part of the Indo-Pacific region. We are central to it. Forces that will shape this region affect us equally. Opportunities that beckon us are available to both India and us. So the future that we can build together will depend a lot on how we come together to work with each other. To build a secure and stable and peaceful region that we need and to reinforce and build our prosperity that we aspire to. And if India and ASEAN need to work together, and I can assure you, 
that no region has greater priority for our prime minister and for our government than the Indo-Pacific region. No policy initiative gets as much attention as our Act East policy. And I have just spoken a few minutes back of, uh, to Prime Minister Lee Sien Lung as my favorite call. And he emphasized again the importance that ASEAN nations attach to relations with India too. So if we have to build this relationship, it is the youth which will sow the seeds of the future partnership. And that is why I really commend this initiative of India Foundation backed by the Ministry of External Affairs. So what must we do together? We must get our youth to engage more, to spend more time with each other in colleges and schools, doing internships in each other's country, working with each other in laboratories. And we must spend more time doing social impact projects together. But there is something that excites me even more. It is the power of innovation and what we can do together. This is what has excited me the most over the past uh, three years. And when we are talking of COVID, let me give you an example of a young Indian who lives in Singapore. And as a response to COVID, he has developed an into a, a little device, which is like Fitbit, which you can buy for $18, which measures parameters like fever, blood pressure, uh, heart rate, SO2, SpO2, and also fatigue levels. Something that can indicate the possibility of COVID. And this is engineered in Bangalore. This is how today innovation can bring our people together. And it is being used by the government here in Singapore and in many countries around the world. And before I conclude, I wanted to give those of us who are in India and those of us who are in ASEAN region, some of the initiatives that we are taking for the youth in the realm of innovation and technology and startups. One, in 2018, Prime Minister Modi had suggested to Prime Minister Lee Sien Lung that we should start an India-Singapore hackathon for our university students. We've already had two editions of it. And the third edition this year at his suggestion will be an India-ASEAN hackathon. And it isn't ASEAN teams competing against um, single Indian teams. It will be the youth of India, Singapore, and the rest of ASEAN forming teams together and working on problems that we all confront. We have, uh, for example, the first country where we have launched India's payment products, Bheem and Rupee, is Singapore. Together, we are working on a platform called Business Sans Border that will connect the MSME sector and provide a value chain solution in India, ASEAN, and beyond. In 2018, in November, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi became the first global leader to deliver the keynote address at the Singapore FinTech Festival, which is the largest FinTech festival in the world. And he inaugurated a platform called Apex. It connects fintech companies to banks and financial institutions, and it is powered by ASEAN Bankers Association and Monetary Authority of Singapore. Today, there are 200 fintech companies on that platform and about 60 banks. This is a platform which is bringing about 80 Indian fintech companies into close partnership with, uh, with banks in ASEAN region and vice versa, Singapore and ASEAN based fintech companies in collaboration with, uh, 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 with banks in India and elsewhere. We have similarly, you all heard about India's extraordinary journey with the India stack, the public, inf uh, public digital platform based on Aadhaar, cell phones and, uh, and, uh, 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 and bank accounts, for example. And this has created the largest set of APIs anywhere in the world, which we call the India stack. And that is transforming governance, public delivery of service, mainstreaming the marginalized, empowering the weak, putting banking in, and pension and insurance within the reach of all and innumerable different benefits. Together with Singapore, we are working on a project that can translate this experience for ASEAN and the rest it is important because we share many similar traits and many similar challenges. 
Similarly, we've got a platform that High Commission of India has set up called India Singapore Entrepreneurship Bridge, which brings startups in India, Singapore, and ASEAN together. We've had three editions of that in the course of these last uh, three, uh, two years. There is Singapore FinTech Festival where I see the youth of India, Singapore, and ASEAN working together um, as one. So there are innumerable new examples of the way we are collaborating together. And today, as the world is battling pandemic, as we are looking to a future where we want the planet to be healthier, where we want our world to be more compassionate, where we want our society to be more inclusive, where we want our worlds to be more cooperative and more peaceful, we can use the power of technology and innovation to come together and work as Indian and ASEAN because it is in your hands that lies the future of a partnership that holds great promise for our region and for our world. So before I conclude, let me uh, just say that it is the, we must draw upon the comfort of our culture, the familiarity of our history, the pull of the opportunities, and above all, the power of our innovation, the power of our youth to craft a new partnership and a new journey on an ancient route. Thank you very much. God bless you. Stay safe. And we look forward to seeing you lead India and ASEAN into, into greater heights in the future. Thank you very much.